Hello and welcome to Sunday morning worship services at the Church of WordPress. Uh, thanks for getting up early this morning. I appreciate it. We'll try to make it worth your while. Um, I am Tom Tortorisi, and I actually started out as a designer because I've always loved good design. And I'm grateful that most companies understand the importance of a good professionally designed website and they're willing to pay for it. Not all, but most. And as designers tend to do, I've trolled around online um, looking at awesome websites for inspiration. But when I started looking closer, I noticed something interesting. A lot of those professionally designed websites were filled with weak, even amateurish writing. Um, clearly, more thought was put into the uh, colors and fonts than into the company's core messages. And that seems surprising to me because as much as a clean, distinctive web design can help visually define the brand, I can't say I've ever responded or bought the company's product because I like their website design. On the other hand, it feels funny to admit that I have responded and bought stuff from ugly websites. You probably have too. So I'm not sure I find this kind of, um, kind of curious, but it got me thinking. So if people are shopping online for things like jewelry, clothing, or photography, it's really the pretty images of um, beautiful things that uh, help entice people and move the sale along. But most of our companies and most of the sites we work on, for example, business services, don't have pretty products to show. So I asked, what is it strategically that helps, helps engage people, helps them to look around, click around, and eventually to buy? The answer seemed to be, it's the written word. And that's when I decided to become a copywriter. Which, of course, brought up um, all kinds of other issues. I mean, how, you know, how do we, uh, you know, really engage people, um, you know, let's see, sorry, how do we engage people, yeah. sorry. How do we actively sell these days without sounding sa salesy? And how do we actively, um, in, in, and how do we engage people with a notoriously short attention span? And how do we stand out from competitors who, who um, pretty much sell the same thing? And these are challenges, yes, um, but there's some of the challenges we'll talk about today. Um, but first, I want to make a distinction between uh, web copy on our home page and our product and service pages versus web content on our blog posts and white papers. Um, for our purposes, copy is for selling to people and content is for educating them, generally speaking. And today we'll focus on writing web copy from three angles, the strategy, the pages, and the process. With um, business websites, I found that even more important than the actual wording is the strategy behind those words. And the first big picture strategy issue to consider is, do we want a website for our company or do we want a website for our customers? Um, put another way, do we want a corporate style website that um, talks mostly about our firm and our vision or do we want an active marketing website to drive engagement, responses, leads, and sales? So let's read it, a slightly exaggerated uh, example of the first one. With uh, corporate websites, some companies seem to think that this kind of stuff will impress people. Um, it's an approach that focuses on what the seller supposedly thinks. It's all about we and our and us. But a true marketing website uh, approaches things more from the buyer's perspective. It means digging deeper to understand what the customer is really trying to achieve and looking closer at their universe of perceived needs, unspoken needs, um, influence, constraints, beliefs, and feelings. A good marketing website starts there. Now, is that company more likely to make a genuine connection if they boast about what they're proud of or if they uh, dig into what the customer is proud of? Okay. Um, the, uh, the inward focused approach I find can be common when companies write their own web copy. But here's the thing from the visitor's perspective, their own company is, uh, is nearly, isn't nearly as important 
well, that company is not nearly as important as their own child by an enormous margin, right? So start there. Um, I've noticed that even a lot of designer websites focus on what they've done in the past versus what, uh, you know, what, what their customers are trying to achieve in the future. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't talk about our companies and our capabilities on our website. Of course, we should. Um, but it might be more effective if we start with what the customer is trying to achieve and then lead them to our, our product as the perfect solution. So let's say we have a residential real estate company and we've developed some kind of technical innovation. Okay, and that's great, but maybe our technology advantage shouldn't be the main thing. Maybe make the customer benefit the main thing and then use our technology advantage to support that claim. Okay. So it's not just about what we offer. Um, it's more about what you can have. Uh, simply understanding that difference can bring our website copy to the next level. Uh, another approach is to create a single benefit statement that covers both what we offer and what you can have. Okay. This is the marketing paradox. Remember, a company and its products are only relevant through the lens of the buyer's own perceived needs. But here's the thing, as business owners, as company employees, as, as uh, company insiders, uh, we naturally carry an insider's perspective and set of assumptions, which can actually be a, uh, a handicap when we're talking to outsiders or, or visitors. So part of our challenge as marketers is to go beyond how we see ourselves and even how we see our customers and refocus on how buyers see themselves. Um, what was the situation that led to their online search for a solution? Okay. How do they see the various options out there? Um, what, what questions are they stuck on? Okay. Uh, if that's where they're starting, that's where we need to start. Now strategically, there's one marketing question that every company must answer before starting any new website. Unfortunately, since that question is almost never asked, uh, a lot of sites go spinning off in the wrong direction. Um, and here it is. Are we mostly selling the idea of our product to people who hadn't considered it? Or are we mostly selling competitively to other companies, uh, to, buy, uh, to buyers who are actively shopping? Uh, for example, the first company to uh, develop uh, collaboration software uh, was selling the idea of online collaboration. But now there are a lot of similar products online and they're all competing to, um, you know, with, by, by pointing out their own competitive advantages. So, why is this important? Uh, let's say we have a professional landscaping business and our homepage might try to sell hardworking homeowners on the idea of professional landscaping. Okay. Well, that's kind of fun, but here's the problem. The people you're trying to convince here, uh, do-it-yourselfers who do their own planning and gardening, aren't online looking for professional landscapers, so they have no reason to ever land on your site. So who exactly are we talking to here? Uh, chances are the people who are Googling Atlanta landscapers are higher income homeowners who are already convinced of the benefits of having a professional landscaper and are online searching to compare the various providers, right? So that's why it would be important to offer some kind of competitive advantage or unique approach to set us apart from the pack. So let's say we ask some questions, jot down some notes, and it turns out that the head of the company is a master landscaper. So that might be a differentiator. But the problem with that is it's still about the company. How do we make this about the customer? What's the advantage to the homeowner? So how about this? Okay, so that's better, but uh, let's keep going and take a look, closer look at homeowners who pay for landscaping, and we might find that they tend to drool over the pictures in home and garden magazines. That lets us take things a step further. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. The headline has a strong emotional appeal to the sensibilities of that homeowner, 
and then the, in the subhead, we, we tie that to a logical reason where we're the right ones for the job. Okay. So, um, so the point here is that unless you have a totally unique product to sell to that market or all your uh, visitors already know you, then online marketing is mostly a competitive arena where we need to differentiate ourselves to stand out. And to do that in a meaningful way starts with asking questions, not just about the company, but about the customer. Here we do see a benefit, but we can't quite tell what the company is selling. Um, this actually happens a lot. Job one for the top of the home page is to quickly make clear what we offer and maybe also who it's for so people know they're in the right place. Job two is to offer a unique approach that gives the buyers themselves an advantage. Okay? Because if we don't stand for something, then our marketing message is simply, we exist. Here are a few other ideas to help your web page uh, copy hit its target. You can paint pictures with words, including how that person is going to feel after they make the right choice. Plus, it's not always about uh, selling to people. It can be about empowering them to do something. And also, we want to sh show them what obstacles are standing in their way so that we can, um, we can show we, you know, that we, we can solve that. You know, in this case, it's just the perception that getting uh, certified will take too long. So this is more likely con to connect because it's about that person stuck in their career or looking for a solution. It's less likely to connect if we um, just make it about the college and their program. If we're trying to... Um, solve a problem for people, we might first want to tap into their pain. If we're helping them achieve something, it's about what we can help them gain. Here we address pain in the headline and gain in the subhead. So if we're marketing a product or service, here's what I think it comes down to in the real world. In your copy, show that folks that the things that are important to them are important to you too, and that creates a bond and a cultural fit. Um, I also see a lot of companies emphasizing how long they've been in business. And it's okay to mention somewhere we have seven years experience in web design, but you know, everyone has experience, so is that really a compelling reason to use you? Okay. Um, I also see headlines today like, where are developers and we're passionate about what we do. You know, I love the idea of that, but I'd also love to know exactly how your passion is going to help me shine if I hire you. Okay. Uh, in any case, we've been focusing a lot on that main homepage headline and banner because if we don't grab their attention with that, we're not giving folks a reason to read any further. Uh, now we'll go through the pages of a website one by one and with some rapid fire um, copy questions. Uh, tips and ideas um, that you may or may not have thought of. Now, we generally um, plan a site based on three layers. Um, the home page is layer one uh, with brief intros to the company's products, approaches, and um, benefits. Layer two is mostly product and service pages. And then layer three, if needed, can be pages that get deeper into topic details for readers who are interested in digging that far. Homepage. Um, overall, large blocks of text on home pages these days tend to scare people away. So um, let's think in terms of smaller blocks of text, um, 10, 15, 25, 50 words with headlines for each. In this limited amount of space, there's really no f uh, room for fluff or wasted words. In fact, every phrase should plant a seed uh, drawing people closer to their own conclusion that our, our offerings are their best option. And um, so, so um, the whole point of the exercise, of course, is to build temptation so that they want what we've got. Mm -hmm. 
two, our homepage intros and highlights should mostly be aimed at first-time visitors and early stage buyers, layer one. Um, prominent and enticing links can take them to full topic pages, layer two. Number three, um, for buyers who are just starting out, there's probably an emotional component to their goal seeking. So let's reflect those sensibilities uh, by maybe offering some empathy um, and making an emotional connection. Uh, four, your new visitors are generally start out, start out by visually scanning your page. They will read prominent headlines, but may or may not read your text. Okay. So let's make sure we put our most important benefits in those headlines for what I call a scanner-first approach. Um, with those short attention spans today, we want to play our best cards right up front where they can't be missed. Okay, and five, you probably have a call to action button, but people may not be quite ready to buy. So adding a second button in the header or just below it gives them another option. It can lead to what you might call a find out more page, which can take various forms. Um, this second layer page is kind of a next step for readers on your homepage. Um, use this page to expand on some of the themes on your home page. Maybe tap into the most um, common issues or questions, drawing people to the next steps of working with us. And also maybe offer objective tips, ideas, insights here to help folks get closer to their goal. Okay? Because to be authentic, to uh, build trust, we can't just try to sell. We have to genuinely try to help. Mm -hmm. What I like about your words, the call to action words is that as opposed to just put, you know, read more, those are action words, you know, like find out more, buy now, explore options. So those are actionable action words as opposed to learn more. Good point. Excellent. Product and service pages. There's an interesting trend for product and service pages to look just like home pages um, because when people are doing a search, this may be the first page they land on and it's just more engaging than an ordinary WordPress text page. Um, next, we said that early stage buyers tend to respond to the emotional aspects of a possible purchase. But if they're digging into the second and third layer, they probably shifted into logic mode, uh, comparing details for making a final decision. So let's uh, mirror that with logical arguments and uh, competitive advantages. Um, and third, uh, in addition to talking about our services, we may also list the common problems or frustrations out there because if you addre address the issue they happen to be having, then they'll love it that someone understands them. And finally, since um, scanners often read headlines but not text, consider the importance of subheads. These are secondary headlines. Um, to help bridge the gap between headline and text to help draw the reader's eye in. Hmm. Blog posts. Um, overall, our blog posts should, should not be promoting our company or our service, but I think it's okay to maybe educate folks on the general benefits of the types of solutions we offer. Okay. Um, for example, uh, cloud backups versus hard drive backups. But separately, in a at the bottom, in a box or in a bold font, maybe include a sentence or two on how our product relates to the issues discussed in the blog post, and maybe include a link to a product page to get more marketing value out of your blogging efforts. And finally, when choosing blog topics, don't write for do-it-yourselfers or your peers, but rather about the issues faced by people or organizations that buy products or services like yours. Make sense? Likewise, I don't think people go to our About page to read about how wonderful we think we are. Um, instead, let's do a few things here, maybe in different sections of our About page. Uh, first, let's reinforce what it is we sell, who it benefits, and our overall approach to helping customers, rather than an inward-focused mission statement. Okay. Um, plus, maybe a bit about the nature, um, structure, and size of our firm. Short version. 
Uh, next, let's tell, take the opportunity to tell our story. Not a, a detailed company history, but rather what were some of the insights or lessons that we've gained in the course of our professional development and what were some of the episodes and um, obstacles that helped us uh, acquire them. Okay? The more human your story, the more other humans can relate to it. Um, finally, we can have a separate section that lists uh, relevant awards, badges, credentials, and advanced degrees. Uh, if you're doing a bio page on each employee rather than a detailed resume, let their personality show through. Two things on our contact page. One, make sure people don't feel like they're going to be obligated or pressured if they give up their personal info. This will make them hesitate. So keep your copy here friendly, helpful, and low commitment. Second, they're more likely to call or fill out your form if you let them know up front what next steps they can expect. This is more important than you might think. My recommendation on testimonial, testimonial pages is to not have them. In, instead, um, pull out the very best bits and sprinkle them around our other pages uh, in at least a medium-sized font where people might actually see them. Uh, the best quotes relate to common customer issues and how we help solve them rather than just general accolades about what a wonderful company this is. Um, that way, uh, we're letting our customers speak out in a way that does some of the selling for us. For the last part of our program, ladies and gents, we're going to talk about the copywriting process. It starts with what's called discovery or gathering information, and that generally starts with the web writer interviewing the company owner or other key players um, ab about their uh, company and uh, what they want to achieve. Uh, a good writer digs deeper and asks questions that had never been asked before. Um, also, I might ask the same question in different ways to get past the superficial answers and the first thing off the top of their head. If the company says they offer good customer service, well, don't stop there. Ask them to be more specific and you might come up with a meaningful nugget that uh, you can build upon. So be a detective and try to follow different lines of inquiry. Um, when asking clients questions, I might ask them to answer from their customer's point of view. I'll ask when customers are happy, what are some of the things they say? Or even, even better, if they choose not to buy from you or not to buy at all, what might be some of the reasons? Ask what are the buyer's uh, most commons, co common uh, uh, obstacles, questions, and concerns, and issues. Okay. So we can address those up front in our web copy. Um, is there any way this product saves time or money? Be good to know. Um, ask about competitors, including their strengths and weaknesses, and maybe we can find an advantage or a niche, um, you know, or even unmet need. So you see how writing web copy isn't just explaining what our company offers. It's the expression of a strategy, and that strategy starts with meaningful connections between the company's strengths and what people out there are thinking, feeling, and wanting. By the way, I like to interview a company manager and a sales or customer service employee together because it's that employee who really deals every day with those customers' issues and questions. Now, more often than not, when someone sits down to start writing a web copy, they open a document in Word or a new page in WordPress, and they start typing. You know what? Eh, that's not the way to do it. Why? Because the actual writing isn't the first step. It's the last step. Uh, what we first want to do is review our notes um, to see if any patterns emerge from, um, from that interview. And next, for each page or section of copy, let's create a separate Word, Word document. Okay? Then, let's rewrite all our notes, but this time drop each of those benefit points into um, the appropriate Word doc. Okay? 
Okay? So when you finish, you'll have several documents, each containing uh, notes for that appropriate um, web page. So don't worry about final wording yet, but do think about the connections you can make about between the company's uh, advantages and delighted customers. Then, after we've categorized the points, that's the next step is to prioritize those benefit points in each of our Word docs. Okay. Uh, what's the most important point on that page? Maybe mark it as an A. Second most important would be a C. Other points, a uh, B. Other points could be Cs. Okay. Also consider my, where you might just delete your lowest rank points to not distract from your strongest material. Okay. Now we're uh, finally ready to start the actual writing. <coughs> um, first, for each web page, the most important point of benefit um, can be expressed in the main headline. The second most important point should make it into a subhead. The text would include uh, support for those points as well as other items from your list. So if we do it right, we should end up with a lean initial copy draft that um, is strategically on target. Um, that generally doesn't happen when we're just writing off the top of our head. Next, we go back and see where we can improve or polish our copy. Uh, can a certain point be made more clearly um, or more succinctly? Um, brevity is more important than it's ever been. No longer sentences or real long paragraphs. Our first sentence should intrigue people to read further. Um, a vague or obvious opening line, and you could lose them right there. And for our last line, sometimes I like to circle around to that uh, emotional connection to set up the call to action that follows. Um, next, use a upbeat, active voice, starting some sentences with the word you or an implied you. Uh, for example, get unlimited online backups versus we offer unlimited online backups. And remember that smart people today uh, will respond to specific benefits rather than vague uh, promises or claims. Finally, finally, let's keep the tone of our writing um, friendly and uh, authentic and informal as if we were having a conversation with that particular reader rather than an authoritative corporate voice, which actually tends to create distance between uh, the company and uh, the visitor. Okay, well, we haven't focused uh, on the SEO aspects of web writing so far, but everything you read about SEO today says start by appealing to humans rather than search engines because well-written, engaging copy um, will get people to read, click, uh, share, and come back again, and that's an increasing factor in Google's algorithms. Um, plus, adding third-layer topic detail pages over time, um, as well as blog posts, makes Google happy and gives us opportunities to add more keywords, one or two per page, um, use several times headlines and text. Um, to attract ready-to-buy shoppers, we want to focus on more specific, what they call long-tail keyword phrases, rather than broad single words. And if your primary keyword simply doesn't work in your main H1 headline, as is often the case when we're writing for humans, then use it in your H2 subhead. But don't overdo it with keywords, uh, otherwise we end up with unreadable silliness like this. <laughs> Okay, one last section. Let's finish up. Okay. Now, if you're thinking of writing copy for your own site, but this seems like a lot of steps and you just, you know, feel like you're just too close to it, um, well, you know, uh, that's why there are professional writers. Or if you're designing a site for a client and you want professional written copy to go with your professional design, that's where there are copywriters. Uh, plus, of course, if you're a designer, you know that uh, waiting for the client to cough up their copy and content uh, can bog down the entire project. Uh, as important as this is, clients struggle because they're not writers any more than they're designers, right? 
But when you do choose a copywriter, remember that conversion optimized um, marketing writing is a specialty among writers, so it's very different than, say, blog writing. Anyway, we start with an initial talk and a decision over the project scope so the writer can uh, do a cost estimate. Um, if the web design firm is bringing in a writer, that writer can either work directly with the client and be um, paid, paid by the client, or the writer can be part of the dev team and be paid through the, the agency. In that case, copywriting would simply be a line item in the web design company's initial website proposal. Um, two, generally the writer does the writing first as they determine the section of, sections of copy needed to convey the right series of messages, and then the designers design around that. Or the designers can design first and the writer writes to fit the various copy sections Though if though letting the message drive the design really makes a lot more sense if we're trying to build a persuasive case for something. Um, we talked about the interview. Um, there if you find that the writer only asks questions about the company and not about their customers, thank them for their time and find another writer. A good writer will dig deeper and make uh, stronger connections. Um, rather than simply parroting back whatever the business owner says, just in nicer words. Um, five, if you have a limited budget, consider having the writer just write the home page and other prominent sections of the site. Um, and finally, once the writer has completed their first draft of copy, the client, of cor course, will have a chance to review it and suggest uh, revisions if uh, something seems misleading or certain wording doesn't seem to ring true in their industry. And other than minor word changes, it's probably best if the client doesn't try to rewrite the copy themselves, but rather explain to the writer the reason for the change. Okay. And the writer, of course, will uh, submit one or more additional drafts of copy until the client is happy and signs off uh, with a final approval. Okay. In the case, if you're hiring a writer, uh, the fact that, uh, that you know, we're aware of some of the issues we talked about today will make you a better point person for that copywriter. Um, my smart co colleague, Kathy Druin, the main organizer here at uh, WordCamp, offered this interesting insight. Um, hopefully today we can agree that the visual part of a website, while certainly super important, takes the reader and the company only half the way there. Earlier asked three questions. How do we proactively sell these days without sounding salesy? Well, by honestly focusing on what the customer is trying to achieve rather than just what the company thinks of themselves. Next, how do we engage an online audience with a notoriously short attention span? Well, by putting important benefits in intriguing headlines and taking a scanner first approach to um, a layered website. And then finally, how do we stand out among competitors who pretty much sell the same thing? Well, by zeroing in on that one main benefit, approach, or insight that shows that we understand our buyers better than anyone else. Anyway, I want you to do me a favor. Next time you look at a new website and say, well, that's a good site, I want you to stop and look closer and ask, well, is it actually a smart business website uh, optimized to engage people in an elicit response? Or is it simply just a nice looking website design? So separate the strategy from the aesthetics when you judge a new site and you will learn some very useful and interesting things. In the meantime, um, you can jot down URL here for um, slides and a fun little ebook. And if you have questions later um, on copywriting, um, come up for a card. Um, anyway, I know that was all, a lot to throw at you, but uh, thanks for sticking with it. Uh, luckily for you, that's all I got. Any questions? 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, blogging mostly focuses on the topic that you're blogging about, uh, whereas a marketing writer is focusing on the audience and is doing some research, doing some thinking, asking some questions, um, you know, ab ab about where that audience is, is starting. Uh, so, so it's, it, it starts with a, just a totally different approach. And, and rather than just coming up with information about a topic, it's, it's more from outside, you know, looking in. In the back? Um, you talked a little bit about, about um, how uh, content is right. Mm -hmm. um, what's the best way to kind of vet out what type of marketing writer I might want, what type of writer I might want for my business? What type of? Well, generally, you know, you've, like I said, you've, you've got copy for the front pages of your site, and you know, and you want a a marketing copywriter. But if you're looking for for somebody to do blogging, then a content writer. So, like I said, there's some people that go, you know, can, can handle both, but uh, but they really are two two different ty types of writing. Okay, um, somebody writing a sales page or a landing page would be a marketing copywriter, and you know there are some differences. You know, if, if it's if it's a landing page, say from a, from an email campaign, um, you know you want to you know connect the two, and there, and brevity is really important naturally on a sales page, and you want to drive them as closely as possible to responding. <laughs> Well, I mean, well, um, both kinds of writers today should be able to do SEO writing, and and for some companies, SEO is part of the strategy. Um, for some companies, it's not, and if it's not, I would say you know don't do it just for its own sake because the more you focus on search engines, you've got to pull away a little bit from humans. But that is part of the writer's challenge is is to try to um, I integrate both. You know. Long, t long t uh, tail um, keywords. Okay, that would be um, instead of um, in, like a, a broad term might be, um, you know, slippers. You know, if you're searching for slippers, whereas a long term trail, long tail phrase might be um, pink bunny slippers. So that is more specific. The, you know, the person who's looking for slippers is just kind of looking around, but somebody's looking who's, who's searching for pink bunny slippers know exactly what they're looking for and are probably closer to buying than the person who's just, you know, wants to see what's out there in slippers. Um, yeah, should, <laughs> probably, okay, I mean, it's, good, it's a fair question. No, we shouldn't make them up, but we can edit them um, because very often you'll end up with, you, may, you know, maybe a paragraph, but like I said, you, we want to pull out just the best, very best parts of it because, again, short attention spans, people aren't going to read through a paragraph, but if I can get that quote down to seven or nine words and put it in a big font, people will read it. So, so I think, you know, that's what we're looking for, and also if the client, you know, is going to be asking their customers for testimonials, you know, maybe we can prompt them to get them to focus on some specific problem that that comp that client that customer was having, and then how we help solve it. To me, that that is just more useful than some some testimonials that are just very broad, you know. David.
cracking down on that mm-hmm. because it's become a real problem. Mm-hmm. And they're also cracking down on testimonials for my cousin is the one who said this, and unless they're a real mm-hmm. customer. Right. Um, so uh, when you edit it, make sure that you don't alter the substance. Good point. Ex- excellent point. Mm-hmm. Right. No, I said it was really, really good. Well, okay, that's close enough. Right, right. <laughs> yes, and there are, well, no, what will happen is the FTC will, will say, who is JH? They'll, 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 they'll lay a subpoena down on you. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't include a testimony with, without a full name of attribution, and it's also a good idea to, sh- to shoot an email to the person who who gave that testimonial and, and show them the edited version and say, is this okay? Yeah, the, re- the reason is because there were people that were just flat out. They were, they were, they were searching for an mm-hmm. Okay. It was not just one guy being Ola Jensen Barnum. I mean, it was right. becoming, it was, it was getting to the point where there were more fake testimonies online than real. Yeah. Yeah, which which is why there's kind of a movement away from on-site testimonials uh, and and rather having links to re- actual review sites that you can't scam it you know quite as easily. Hi, when you talk about um, the about page, you mentioned the number of different sections. Would mm-hmm. you recommend trying to stick those onto a single page or having them in the pull-down menu and doing an about tab? Um, I think it helps to break it up a little bit um, with just like totally different sections, whether it's separated by a line or maybe different um, color, color boxes, or even think about <clears throat> how today's home pages are structured and you've got different kind of physical layers of information, and that way it's just not all crammed together and it's just more easy to read if you've got separate sections. And that way you can separate your, you know, what you do from your story and it doesn't all run together. Yeah, I think so, you know. And how you do that is up to the designer. And, you know, or some of it could be in a sidebar if you've got sidebars. Jim? Right. <clears throat> right. The, um, the home page, and then um, what I uh, what I'll do is the uh, the uh, intro or head and subhead on on product pages, and then the the uh, uh, the closing, which which leads to a call to action. So that way, the the most prominent parts of the site have some marketing sheen, and then and then the uh, the client fills out the rest which sometimes cannot be a bad idea if it's highly technical and it would just take so long for the writer to get up to speed on, on the high level of technology with which the um, client is talking to their own customers. Um, so you know, it's, it's, you know, that's a good way to approach it. Uh, would you suggest that the writer or the site owner select the font type, size, and color? Um, that's the designer's job. The designer. What does the average um, website copywriter run? Is it a per hour? Is it a per project? What should we, I mean, if we haven't hired one before, what's the realm of a share compared to both parties' sites? Is it by package? Um, every writer is going to, uh, you know, handle that differently. Some do it um, by page. Um, some will do it. Um, you know, quote, quote the entire site, um, but I mean it's going to take at least you know for a few hundred dollars at least to do the home page uh, and the discovery because even if the writer is just writing the home page, they still have to go through the discovery process to uh, you know to make sure they're saying the right thing. So usually, you know, even on a a you know, reduced project, it's still, you know, going to be a little bit higher, and then additional pages are going to be, uh, you know, a little bit less. So you're saying for, like, one project, roughly, maybe 10 to 500 or something? Yeah, between 500 and 1,000. As a writer, how do you work on that discovery process? 
the dis discovery process. Um, well, I don't generally need to explain the, pro um, the process to them. I'll just tell them I'm going to ask you some questions and, and um, you know, and, and then basically, you know, it's, it's, it's my job to ask the right questions and then to take those um, answers and to do something useful for them and to know what I get out of that interview that is useful and what is not. Um, because very often, I don't start getting the good stuff until the second hour of the interview. And, and there are some writers who won't go that far. You know, they say, okay, this is what you want to say, that's what I'll write. Well, what's that really worth, right? Because you need somebody who, who sees it from, from the point of view of somebody who's not the company owner, right? Right. That's a good I'm point. People want you to just here's fifty pictures of my products, and you know, right. here's about what's so great about. Me. Sure, you sure. That, that's, that's a really good point. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, hard, it's hard for anyone to separate ourselves from our own point of view. So you kind of have to hold them through that a little bit, and you might ask them questions, and they might hesitate, and and you know, on that a little bit, but you kind of you know have you know said explain to them that you know. Yeah, yeah, because they figure it's my site, should be all about me, right? Well, right, and, and that's fine. And I, and I find that, that even though companies start, we're, we're done. Time is time. I guess it's time, okay. Well, I guess the WordPress um, WordCamp train has reached the station. Um, please exit the train to your right.